This is the last in a series of videos about uh, finite element analysis and particularly on how to develop a bar element. Now we've done some problems before using bar elements where the bar elements were horizontal and that's okay, but most of the problems I would want to solve don't have just horizontal elements. What if I wanted to do, uh, I don't know, a simple frame that looked like this? had a force on it. Okay, There's just a couple of elements in here. Now we know that it's not going to be too hard to solve. There's going to be, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees of freedom. So we're going to wind up with a 5 by 5 matrix, uh, global stiffness matrix. So it's not going to be very big, but three of those elements, four of those elements are not horizontal. So there's, we have to have some way to account for the fact that they're not horizontal. Up till now, the stiffness matrix we had looked like E A over L, so it's 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. That was the stiffness matrix, right, in, in global coordinates, because that's all we know about. Now what we're going to do is figure out how to start with this and transform them from the element coordinates to the global coordinates if the element isn't horizontal. Now this is probably going to take two videos. I, I can't imagine finishing this in what another eight minutes um, so just bear with me I mean I could plow through it but it's that would be asking a lot of your patience so this is going to be a two-part video I think I'll get through the first half and then we'll stop and we'll do the next part in the second clip okay so let's 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 write out the problem here okay I need an element well here's an element there there's a finite element okay got one end got the other end got this little hole in the other whoops there we go there's my finite element Okay, it, it only can extend or contract, all right? It can stretch or contract, that's it. Tension or compression. So it only has two degrees of freedom. This is grid point one here, and that's grid point two here for the element. Okay, x1 goes that way, is there, and x2 is right there. Okay, that's, that's what we know so far. If, if, if this is all a surprise to you, go back and look at some of the other videos and just you know, pause this one, go back and look, catch up, and then catch up with this one. Gotta love YouTube. All right, now, we already know that there's lots of reasons why we wouldn't want this bar element at exactly that angle. I want it at that angle, okay? If I want to be able to make a truss out of these, I have to be able to rotate this to whatever angle I want. Well, that EA over L11 one, one minus 1 thing, here, I'll write it up again. Okay. You see a theta or a sine or a cosine in there anywhere? I don't. Okay. This only works if the element happens to be lined up with one of the coordinate axes. Well, that's not. Or even if I rotated the coordinate axis, now the other elements wouldn't line up. So I really have to come up with something more general than this. And that's uh, at an angle. It's called a coordinate transform. Okay, there's a thing called a coordinate transformation matrix, which is a lot, a lot less scary than it sounds. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this first half of this clip is I'm going to show you where that comes from, and then the second part of the clip I'm going to show you what to do with it, and we're going to make this nice general bar element that works no matter what the angle is. Okay, so that's that's the path we're going to walk down here. right now. This is going to be all trigonometry, right? But just trigonometry. There's nothing more than that, right? So let's say that my coordinate system for the whole model, for the whole that whole truss I want to make, or whatever part it is I'm trying to model, I got to pick a coordinate system, right? Well, I'm going to pick that, right? That looks pretty pretty tame, um, and that's going to be the x direction, and that's going to be the y direction. Now the subscript here is really important. Subscript says global, all right? All the elements, no matter what angles they're at, I'm going to have to transform them so they work in this coordinate system. All right? We're going to look at element coordinate systems. Sometimes those are called local coordinate systems. We're going to transform all those so they work in this one. Because if we're going to have a stiffness matrix, it has to be a global stiffness matrix. It has to be one where the whole matrix is in one coordinate system. All right? If you're trying to add different elements and different coordinate systems without transforming them first, you may come up with a problem you can solve mathematically, but I doubt it'll mean anything. All right? So that's the game we're trying to play here. So let's say I rotated my bar here, 
Now let's say I rotate it to that angle, whatever that angle is. Doesn't matter what the angle is, right? We don't even know what the oops, we don't even know what the angle is. Doesn't matter. We're going to just call that theta. Okay, that's just theta. Okay, and that's x e. That's the element. That's x uh, x in the element coordinate system. Okay, this is there's. As you might have guessed by now, there's an awful lot of just sort of bookkeeping here. When you make mistakes solving finite element problems, about the half the time it's just because you haven't kept track of things carefully enough. It's not a big conceptual problem, it's just sort of the bookkeeping, pushing the numbers around. And that looks like about a uh, 90 degree angle there. Alright, so that's y in the element coordinate system, this one right here. Okay. The element's along the x-axis, along its own x-axis, it's not along the global x-axis. Right? So that's, that's the first big idea here. You've got to accept the fact there's two coordinate systems now. There's the one that the element knows about, and there's the one the whole model knows about. This is the one the element knows about. This is the one the whole model has to be written in. Okay? And all you're trying to do is take this, transform it to that so you can add it in. They're all compatible. This is almost like making units compatible. Not only do the units have to be compatible before you can add things together, the coordinate system has to be compatible too. Bet you didn't think of that till now, huh? That might be a new idea. That's okay. All right, so there we go. There's that. And let's see, I'm going to put, I'm going to draw a triangle here. Now, I'm not expecting you to anticipate where I'm headed here, okay? I'm not sure. I, I had to go look this up. This is not something I can just sit down and intuitively arrive at. I had to go look it up. I'd be pretty surprised if you didn't have to do a little work to uh, absorb this too, so don't feel bad, okay? If this is, took people a long time to work this out, decades, maybe more. If it takes you more than 10 minutes, that's okay. All right, so there's delta x in the global coordinate system, okay? Now, what I'm looking at right now is I'm just looking at the displacement of a grid point. Okay, that's all I'm looking at, all right? And this is in the most general term. It could be on any element. It could be... Uh, due to any force, internal, external, whatever. All I'm trying to do now is show how to transform displacements in one coordinate system, this one, to, to uh, displacements in another coordinate system, this one. That's all I'm trying to do. This is just trigonometry. Okay, so there's displacement in the x direction, okay, in the global coordinate system. And here's displacement in the y direction in the global coordinate system. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty easy. If this grid point moves from there to there, that's displacement x in the element coordinate system. Okay, so that's what the element sees. This and this are what the model sees in the global coordinate system. Okay. Element, global. Element, global. That's, that's all we're trying to do here. So, let's see. If I knew, really knew what I was doing here, let's see. That distance right there looks to me like it's going to be change of x in the global coordinate system times, looks like going to be cosine theta, I guess. And that looks like that's going to be, let's put the little arrows in there, and that's going to be change in the y direction of the global coordinate system times sine theta. Okay, that looks about right. Got a little less sloppy here. Okay, I'm just going to double check here. I'm, I'm cheating here. I'm using my notes. So dy, okay, we're good. All right, so what I can do now is I can say that delta x in the element coordinate system equals delta x in the global coordinate system times cosine theta plus delta y in the global coordinate system times sine theta. Okay. This is important. If I, I got, dang, I got two equations, two unknowns and one equation. All right, I'm going to need one more equation, but I can do that. All right? I want to write this, and I want to write one more of these, and then I'm in business. Then I'll have that whole transformation thing I'm looking for. Well, this was, I, I did this using just deformations in the x direction in the element coordinate system. I'm going to look at deflections, displacements in the y direction. Now, I know that this particular element doesn't have any di di displacements in the y coordinate system, in the el y element coordinate system. That's okay. This is more general than that. I'm trying to make this so it's accurate for any element. I only ever have to do this once. Once I've got this 
thing that we're trying to make here, this transformation matrix, I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw this same kind of coordinate system, only now instead of looking at the displacement of the element in the x direction, I'm going to look at the displacement of the element in its y direction. Okay, so there's global, there's x, e, y, e, theta, theta. Okay, so we're back to pretty much where we started. Okay, this one went perpendicular to that coordinate system and parallel to that one, so should this. Okay, so there. And let's do this again. That's now delta x in the global coordinate system. This is negative, by the way, so I'm going to have to put a negative sign in somewhere to account for that. This is delta y in the global coordinate system. All right. So that means, you see, that's theta. That's going to be delta y in the element coordinate system. Okay, I'm 11 minutes, 11, 11 and a half minutes, 11 and 20 in. So just bear with me for about two more minutes and I'll be done. Okay, and then you can go off and do something perhaps more interesting than this. Okay, so that looks like delta y in the global coordinate system times, uh, let's see, cosine theta. And that looks like delta x in the global coordinate system times sine theta. Okay. All right, same thing. We've got the same thing all over again. Now I'm going to write delta y in the element coordinate system equals delta x, g. See, there it is again. Now, this is negative, right? Okay, I have to account for that fact. I have to put a negative sign there. Um, okay, plus... cosine theta. Okay, let's bring it on home here. Look at that. I bet, I'll bet I could write that as in matrix form. And for now, remember, matrix form is just a notation. Don't worry about the whole colossal field of matrix algebra. For right now, it's just a way of uh, a notational thing. So, let's, let's get rid of this and let's write delta x in the element coordinate system. Okay, that's the vector showing what's on the left side of the equal sign. Alrighty, now I'm going to go cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, cosine theta, let's see, delta x, g, okay, there. Now I've got a matrix expression that relates something going on in the global coordinate system to something going on in the element coordinate system. This is huge. This is the big idea. This is going to be the thing that makes everything else that comes after it work. Okay, Using this, in the next little clip in this, in this two-part video here, we'll show you what to do with this. Using this, be able to make that bar element that we derived only in the x direction. It only knows what the x-axis is so far. Now we can make it know it would work in any direction we want. We can rotate it any way we like and it'll work. So that's what we're going to do in the next half. See you then.